We don't know. <laughs> um, and it's an important question. Um, we think there may be. Uh, men and women in general um, sort of absorb, metabolize medications differently. Um, their immune systems are also slightly different, and so they may respond to certain immune modulation differently. Um, that said, if we actually look at the data from the interventional clinical trials, we really just don't know enough right now. Um, it's a question we think is worth pursuing. Um, and uh, one of the focuses of the talk is really a review that we did of sort of the critical uh, literature in the MS field um, about disease modifying therapies. And we just found that not enough was known about men and women at baseline when they enrolled in the trials uh, and not enough was known about how they responded to the medication both in terms of um, therapeutic effects and also side effects. So um, hopefully um, the newer studies will uh, 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 shine a more focused light on this question. I'm not sure why um, to date the literature has not really uh, honed in on the issue. I think um, there is a couple possible explanations and there, you know, the answer may lay, uh, lie in several of these. So for instance, um, we know that there's a negative publication bias in the literature in general. And so let's say there are no sex differences, then that may not be published. Um, there's also a clear scientific bias. A lot of these questions just have not been raised. Um, and it's not that um, they're not worthy, it's just that they have not been raised. Um, and I'll, go, I'll get back to that. Another hypothesis is that there are differences, but that, um, you know, um, for marketing purposes, it may not be um, as attractive to say that, uh, you know, either men or women don't respond as well to therapy. Um, and so that, I think, um, you know, we should think about. Um, and there just may be no differences, right? So um, I think um, we need to just uh, be diligent and do the work and then be able to say it with certainty. And so a fourth reason why we may not have uh, enough knowledge about potential sex differences in either treatment efficacy or side effects is um, lack of statistical power. And so different studies have to enroll different amounts of men and women to either be representative of the population um, living with MS, so three to one female to male, or perhaps um, powered enough to look at an effect on MS progression. So you may get closer to one to one female to male in the progressive MS trials. Um, but what that means is if you have a lower percentage, say, of men in a trial, the study may not be adequately powered statistically to find a statistical difference or a statistical impact. And so um, attention also has to be placed on whether the studies are powered statistically to find the differences that you expect. If we think a little bit about um, the scientific biases, uh, we know that the more uh, diverse and inclusive uh, the set of scientists and clinicians thinking about these questions um, is, then the more diverse and inclusive the science is. And um, there is an International Women in MS consortium that's kind of uh, a um, developed that sort of advocates for the inclusion of women scientists in the steering uh, committees of the clinical trials and so forth to ensure that diversity of opinion and scientific focus. So we know sex-specific adverse events. So if you think, um, for instance, of uh, you know breast cancer rates or or, or other sort of um, things that can only happen in women or men, then um, those do tend to be reported. Um, but whether other adverse events, um, infections or um, infusion reactions or um, hair loss or other, you know, other um, uh, either side effects or adverse uh, events um, happens more in men and women, we don't know.